Hello and welcome to News Click. So the government of India has once again appointed an interlocutor Dineshwar Sharma for initiating a dialogue in Kashmir. To discuss the issue, we are joined by Gautam Navalakha, an eminent human rights activist who has been working on the issues related to Kashmir for more than few decades. So Gautam, welcome to News Click once again. Thank you for having me. Uh, so this interlocutor has been appointed by the government. What's the relevance of this? Can you just throw some light on the context? Well, this is the fourth interlocutor appointed by government of India. The first time it was by Bajpayee government when they appointed K.C. Pant in 2001, followed by uh, N.N. Vora, who's the present governor of Jammu and Kashmir in 2003. Uh, in both the first two cases, uh, the, uh, most of the people refused to, especially uh, the Hurriyat leadership, had refused to, uh, to meet with this team and they insisted that they would like to speak to somebody, either uh, Prime Minister or somebody as senior, a political person. The third time around, it was in 2010 when the UPA government appointed uh, Dilip Padgaonkar, Radha Kumar and M.M. Ansari, Professor Ansari uh, to form the three-member interlocutors team. They submitted the report also uh, and nothing came out of it. So this is the fourth effort. Uh, the appointment of Dineshwar Sharma uh, is interesting for two reasons. One is that he is uh, an in uh, he was head of intelligence bureau till 2016. Uh, so he's recently retired. He has served in Jammu and Kashmir. And as an intelligence officer, uh, uh, it is claimed that uh, the people will find it easier to speak to him. But he doesn't carry the political clout. Uh, if it's a political issue, which has uh, def defied any solution for the last 70 years, uh, then why have an intelligence officer, however competent uh, he or she may be, um, to initiate a process which has actually <laughs> never uh, been completed. I mean, there have been ample opportunities in the past also. So, as you pointed out, this is the fourth one who's, uh, who's been appointed. What have been experiences in the past three such occasions when the governments have appointed interlocutor to initiate a dialogue process in Kashmir. As I pointed out, not just these, the previous three interlocutors, but all other efforts. I mean, if you look at the roundtable conferences that the UPA government under Dr. Manmohan Singh organized in 2006 and seven, it came to nothing. Starting actually, if you go back to 1990s with Rahul Gandhi, uh, Raj, Rajiv Gandhi's initiative in 1990s, uh, followed by several such interaction and efforts that were made throughout 90s and then the appointment of interlocutors by the by the Bajpay government they haven't led anywhere so the basic question that confronts us is why is it that they have failed and what is it that Dineshwar Sharma uh, led uh, I mean uh, uh, interlocutor Dineshwar Sharma can achieve which the previous efforts uh, fail to realize. And I think that's where we come to the basic fundamental question. What is, what is it that the government of India uh, interested in doing? We saw in the past, as well as now, I mean, if you go back, if we just confine ourselves to this fourth interlocutor who's been appointed, just look at two aspects. The agenda of alliance of, uh, of BJP and PDP talked about holding talks with all internal stakeholders. The statement that was issued officially by the Ministry of Home Affairs, the appointment of Dineshwar Sharma, talks about, drops this internal state stakeholders and brings in a new formulation called legitimate aspirations. Now, many people have asked question, I mean, what, who is to decide what is legitimate? But I think we are if we, if, we, if we have been following the development so far in Kashmir, it is very clear uh, uh, what is meant by legitimate aspiration. Uh, government of India and especially the present dispensation has made its position amply clear. I am not talking about their determination in the last three and a half years to, to, uh, to, uh, to shun talks 
and the very idea of talks. In fact, if we re if you remember in 2014. The same government had rejected uh, appointment of interlocutor, saying that it's 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 no use. But then they also led an all-party delegation. They did, but the whole point is how much of it is charade meant for public consumption and how much is actually seriously meant, especially when we know for a fact that there is there there is a, a, a trust deficit in Kashmir, uh, and it's been there and it's become worse. Three of the, re the reasons why it has become worse is not only because of the Operation All Out or what the three and a half year old uh, BJP RSS government has been doing in Jammu and Kashmir, but also the developments in Jammu, the, the rabid uh, hin um, uh, Hindutvaization in Jammu, uh, which also receives uh, official patronage and state backing in, in promoting it. Uh, uh, and the refusal to recognize that there are uh, and pushing their own agenda for instance 35a which creates the fear of demographic transformation of of uh, jammu and kashmir especially kashmir all these then about the beef ban also beef ban all of this and the lynchings that have taken place in jammu all have contributed to creating this tremendous trust deficit now how do you bridge that Dineshwar Sharma says that his brief is and main effort is would be to talk to the youth and to win them over. Well, that was the case uh, when uh, the interlocutors were appointed by the UPA government and Chidambaram did the same thing. Reach out to the youth. So how is it going to be different? What is it that they are going to offer? How are they going to uh, assure uh, the people they are interacting with uh, that they actually mean that they are sincere and serious this time around, given the baggage which uh, this uh, this government carries of a 70 year old history of rel relentless propaganda and campaign against uh, the Kashmir Kashmiri Muslims and, uh, and Article 370 and 370. And they've been asking for a demo. I mean, they've been talking openly about doing away with 370 and 35A for a very, very long time. Shama Prashad Mukherjee's whole campaign, uh, which is so dear to the RSS BJP, uh, it was fundamentally this. So th that's a million dollar question. I mean, what is it that they'll achieve which others uh, fail to? Uh, that's the million dollar question and how do you bridge the trust deficit, how do you ensure, will they be talking, in addition I like to add, will they be talking to Hurriyat? Because what's the point of talking to the pro-India elements, I mean they are already on board, they are not questioning the constitution. I think one of elements. the reasons why they put this word called legitimate is only to put out these things that they are not going to talk to these people. Looks like it because once you add a prefix legitimate then obviously it implies that some things would be legitimate and we know for sure i mean it's no it's it's no secret we know that they have been talking about not only uh, that there will be no talks with anybody outside the framework of constitution but even when they talk about the constitution the kind of constitution and the changes that they envisage themselves doing away with article 370 doing away with uh, article 35a makes it clear that their own understanding of constitution itself is extremely narrow and rigid so uh, gautam this would be my last question what do you think what should be actually done what should be the way forward well the only way forward is if you create i mean but there is much abused term confidence building measure. The government says that this inter appointment of interlocutor is a confidence building measure. I would say if you really believe in confidence building measure and if Operation All Out is such a great success that Jitendra Singh, the minister in the prime minister's office could declare that the lifespan of militants has been reduced to a few days if not few weeks and that they are on the last phase. If all that is true, then the single most important confidence building measure is demilitarization. Withdraw, reduce troops, withdraw draconian and stringent laws. I mean, do away with Public Sec uh, Safety Act, uh, remove the army so that there is no need for ASPA uh, to be in invoked. Uh, reduce legal immunity and allow cases uh, for war crimes 
or crimes that have been committed against the civilians to be brought before the criminal court, etc., etc. These would be the steps that are required to give the give the message that the government of India and the Indian society is actually serious for for once. If you don't do it and you start by sending an ex. Uh, director of Intelligence Bureau and appoint however uh, competent that person is, however popular and dovish he is, the point is it still doesn't carry the clout that is required and the kind of um, uh, message that you want to send across that you mean that this time you mean business and you are willing to, to talk. And this would also do away with this fear or the, the fear that people have that this is just yet another exercise in fooling them and delaying because the things are not as hunky-dory as the government of India is trying to make it out. Thanks a lot, Gautam, for talking to us on this issue and I'm sure as these things proceed, we'll be coming back to you on such things. Thank you. Lot. Keep watching News Click for uh, further details. Uh, more such news, keep following our Facebook page, our Twitter handle and our YouTube account.